and this morning we look at Manchester City Premier League champions again uh, six titles in seven years and the first side to win four yes four in a row from impact imprint and legacy have we ever witnessed anything like this before will we ever again I'll get Simon and Martin's take on that in a second but Guardiola it wasn't lost on him what they've done in terms of numbers nobody had been better than us so the records the goals and, and points and, and four in a row I said before in our your colleagues so if I land here tomorrow and I say okay the next seven years you will win six Premier Leagues I said are you crazy so I cannot figure out it's impossible so we have done something unbelievable six Premier Leagues in seven years so we compete incredible well again and at the end for a little margin we, we won it uh, we did it and uh and I'm incredible, incredible, really pleased. It was incredible. Martin, uh, mm. Manchester City, have they raised the standard regards what a champion actually is? Well, they, Jim, they, they, they're kind of like champions personified, aren't they? The way that they just keep on winning. I, I, I suppose we should look at the club, really, and how far it's come in that period overall. Um, you think of the, the, the Yaya Torres, the Vincent Companies, you know, that they were kind of like trailblazers, set a standard. Obviously, Pep then arrives, you know, and it's uh, Aguero still doing his stuff. And then De Bruyne, I mean, De Bruyne. And then this year, Foden. And, and I kind of like, when I watched De Bruyne play, because we know he's a wonderful talent, a wonderful player. And he kind of been, he's been looking and using, he has a playbook of the game, which is remarkable. And we go, wow, what did he, how did he see that? And I think he's handed that book now to Foden this season. He's reading from that same book. And it's a very privileged book that not many people can read from. And he has now gone and taken his game to another level. And, and obviously Man City have, have profited from that. Haaland had what seems to be a, a, a quiet season, but still the top goal scorer. These guys just keep there. I think it comes from the manager, though, because he's absolutely driven. And we saw him lying on the floor, didn't we, against Spurs, agonising because he thought maybe Son was running through to score. And it was that close for Arsenal this year. I'm pleased that somebody has taken the distance. It's been usually Jurgen Klopp. And he's another person that we should... Oh, we're going to talk uh, about, talk about an, an honour today, this. one of the all-time greats. So yeah. he couldn't even clock with his quality do enough to stop Pep. But in terms of a, a Premier League winner, Simon, Manchester City, this Manchester City, are they the best we've ever seen? I think it's difficult to argue that they they aren't because of the nature of what they've achieved. I mean, if you're winning the if you're winning four in a row and six of the last seven, then and no one's done that. At any time um, in the incarnation of professional football in the top leagues, whether it be Division One before it became the Premier League or the Premier League as it is now, then you'd find it difficult to argue. Also, in the manner in which they've done it, in the style of play. I mean, the Liverpool side of the 70s and 80s was very dominant, and football was a very different different landscape then. But when you've got somebody that's winning four in a row, winning six of the last seven, winning them with a plum, and winning other things along the way on the way as well. You have to say, in this sort of kind of reductive argument about who's the best, because obviously circumstances are different, pitches are different, scenarios are different. If we're having that conversation, I would say it's difficult to argue that on the field, Man City are the best yes. football club yeah. and its achievements that we've seen. You know, to, to answer the question, Martin, what sets them apart? Let's go to one of the players. What sets them apart? This is Rodri. Great players are all over the leagues, all over the, the clubs. Uh, Arsenal also. They deserve of us. They, they, they went there, they did an un unbelievable season, but I think the difference was in here. When they come here, when they, they face us here in the, in the Etihad, I, I saw them, ah, uh, these guys, they don't want to beat us. They just want to draw, you know, and that mentality, I think we didn't, we wouldn't do it the same way, and we catch it. We catch it, and at the end, if you give us one point, we will win the last seven, eight games, even though how tough it is. So I think it's terms of mentality. I mean, as he says there, according to Rodri, when Arsenal came there, they played for a draw. We're different. We try to win every single game. Arsenal will probably say they do the same, probably in their own defence. But with City, it's a simple case of try to win every single time you go out there, Martin, isn't it? Yeah, they have that luxury, don't they? So Arsenal are a developing club. What do you mean they have that luxury? Because they're so damn good at what they do. You know, that. when well, we're looking at the boxing, you know... You, it's you go into a fight. That's something they've earned, though, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, but you go into a fight. You fight with with Man City. If Arsenal manage a draw, 
and they don't lose to Villa, they can be champions. So they went there to to pick those necessary points up because they know that if they get beat, it just wipes Arsenal out and City go and do it again. Um, I think the reason that Arsenal didn't win the league really was because uh, of Unai Emery. He takes six points off of Arsenal. And I think he's really... Um, I'm going to say this because I genuinely feel this, that he's like the swan on the surface. Very calm, plays against his, his old team respectively, but below the surface, he's desperate. Those little feet are going like crazy to beat Arsenal, and he's managed it. He stopped Arsenal winning the league. It's ironical. I uh, played for, for both great clubs, uh, and Villa have just been amazing. They, like, they started the season, by the way, by conceding five goals, and they finished it by conceding five goals. And in between, they've ended up top four. But they've had a massive say on who won the Premier League this year. But that, that, that is the, the, the level that City set. They set the benchmark. And I think Arsenal are catching up very quickly. And that's Rodri. Because he, he, what he wants to do is send the message, we're the best. And they yeah. do it, they win the trophy, Jim. But that just lays it down for next year. If I'm an Arsenal player now, right, you go away, you think about it, you use this as oxygen, yeah? You come out of the ashes and you come back firing and you keep going until you win. But it's also interesting to see what, what additional they'll need. I mean, yeah, I mean, you can make this, you can, you can pick out the Emery um, dynamic because of the natural affiliation. I don't think Man City over Christmas take one point out of three games. I don't think that's what Man City do. And I think Arsenal drawing with Liverpool, which is entirely explainable, but then losing at home to West Ham and losing at ho away to Fulham yeah. are, are, are really quite defining points. Of course, they go on a remarkable run after Christmas. But I think Manchester City do two things. They wouldn't go on a run like that, is my recall, and maybe someone can point me at something different. Mm. And they finish the season by taking a ridiculous amount of points, so it's almost impossible to over overhaul them mm. yeah. unless you're yeah, in front when, of them. But when City buy a player, they can bring Grealish in, who didn't have a good season this year. There's always one player, isn't there, in the group that's fallen out a little bit with the manager. He takes, a, he sits on the bench, hundred million pounds. He sits on the bench because there's other players who can do the job. Arsenal signings have to happen. Well, Arsenal, has to happen Arsenal are the biggest spenders in the last five years. Yes, it, it can't go on forever. But, but just those players, City but, spent in the past. No, no, hold on. Those players need to hit the ground running. Havertz was a little bit slow coming out of the blocks. Declan Rice has been absolutely magnificent. And there could be and no. Some would argue Jack Grealish has been the same. Mm. in his first season at Man City. Yeah. Arsenal have been the biggest spenders in the last five years, so we can't keep on saying We're it's because saying City that. have done this, City have done that. Arsenal have bought players too, and they bought a lot of players, and they bought a £100 million player in Declan Rice. They've spent a lot of money on players themselves. But they made the fewest some number of, of changes to their starting well, 11 this season. Uh, there are six titles in seven years, and the first side to win four in a row. I mean, it begs the question, where do they go from here? Manchester City, what is next? Presumably five in a row. That would be obvious. It's almost too obvious to say it. You can give us a call on that. 03717 8-10-89. And in spite of Arsenal's gallant challenge, does anybody really remember the runners-up? Uh, we're coming up to 10.20. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.